okay now let us understand simple linear regression simple simple linear regression is very simple please pay attention here if the output variable of interest is continuous right if the output variable of interest is continuous if the output variable of interest is continuous and if you have a single input variable which is continuous then you simply employ a simple linear regression and proceed with your analysis however if the output variable is continuous and if you have a single input variable which is discrete in nature still you proceed with simple linear regression but you have to make some change this discrete variable has to be converted to a dummy variable what does this mean let us understand using the next slide here okay say you have this input variable this is a single input variable one input variable gender however you have discrete data within that and when you have discrete data you need to convert this to a dummy variable and how do you convert that into dummy variable you'll say male equal to one female equal to zero job done wherever you have a male you substitute one wherever you have a female you substitute zero male is one female is zero in that way and then this dummy variable should be used to build prediction equation you should not be using this you should be using this dummy variable all right that is a concept of your dummy variable here now let us understand this concept this case study rather right what is this case study all about <clears throat> this case study is all about predicting your adipose tissue data using the waist circumference value so studies have shown that individuals with excess adipose tissue in the abdominal region have higher risk of cardiovascular diseases i'm assuming this is for only men because i have never heard about a women getting a heart stroke and look at this so there is computer tomography which is commonly called as ct scan and this happens to be the only technique that would precisely allow you to measure your adipose tissue at any side of the body ct scan is the best measure but what are the challenges or problems associated with ct scan many physicians do not have access to this technology it radiation of the patient that is it is going to suppress the immune system of the patients and also it is expensive these are the three problems associated with ct scan so the question here is is there a simpler yet reasonably accurate way to predict the adipose tissue which is easily available which is risk free and which is inexpensive is it possible and this is where a group of researchers conducted a study with the aim of predicting the abdominal adipose tissue area using simple anthropometric measurements which is measurements on the human body basically right and to understand this they have collected the data pertaining to the waist circumference adipose tissue and here is the historical data that they have collected and if you see this historical data you have the observations you have the waist circumference and you have the adipose tissue values first and foremost question that you need to ask yourself is what is y and what is x here y is continuous because i can represent the measurements in decimal format and x is also continuous and you have a single variable if you have a single input variable and y is continuous that is when you proceed with simple linear regression right and that is what we'll be solving using r fine let me not save this data set 
let me go to R and let me load this data set called waist circumference adipose tissue. So in order to load this data set called waist circumference adipose tissue into R, we need to use this import data set option. Let us load from a local file the data set called waist circumference dot adipose tissue. When you try to load this data set, the name of the data set would by default become the object name within R. You can change that object name also, right, if need be. And also you can quickly look at how the data set would appear. Look at this data frame. This is how the data set would appear. You have the waist circumference, you have the adipose tissue values. And you also have to ensure that the heading information is always yes. By default, it is yes. Now let us click on import. The moment you imported the data set, a few functions triggered. Let us understand those first. These two lines of functions got triggered on console. This is the first line. Here the function which got triggered is read.csv because you are trying to load a CSV file using import dataset option. So this is the function. And within this, these brackets, you're giving the path of the dataset along with the dataset name, right? And using this assignment operator, you're assigning the output to this object called wc.at, right? So you loaded the dataset. The moment you loaded the dataset, it comes and appears here. And you have 109 observations. These observations are also called as rows or entries. Or OBS is nothing but observation. And you have two variables, meaning you have two columns. Along with that, there is another function which got triggered, which is view of wc.at. This function would show you the data set here. And here V is in caps. And here V is in caps basically, right? So R is case sensitive. If you use a small V, you'll get an error. So let me explain that. If you use a small V here, V I E W of WC dot AT, it's going to throw an error. Yeah, that goes to say that R is case sensitive. All right. Now, the first and the first and extremely important thing is you need to do exploratory data analysis. What will you do? You try to identify the data types. You know for a fact that both of these are continuous. You try to find out whether data follows normal distribution or not. Then you try to find out the first moment, the second moment, third moment, and the fourth moment business decision. Post this, you have to do graphical representation. As part of graphical representation, you might want to look into histogram to check the distribution, etc. You might also want to look at the box plot to identify whether there are outliers or not. And as I've told you, 60% of your time has to be spent in this. Only and only after that, you proceed with your regression analysis. And as part of your regression analysis, the first step that you need to do is look at the scatter diagram. So the function to come up with the scatter diagram is plot. And if you want to refer to x comma y, waist circumference, you have to give the data set name dollar waste. So it is wc dot at dollar waist circumference, comma wc.80 dollar 80. Now here, whenever you use this function called plot, it has to be plot of x comma y. So the way circumference would come on your x-axis and the adipose tissue would come on your y-axis. Anything that you're trying to predict will be y and you're trying to predict adipose tissue based on waste, so that would be your input. So let us run this function and try to understand how the scatter diagram would appear. 
there we go here is a scatter diagram let me zoom that and uh, let me zoom it even further so what are the three things that your scatter diagram will tell you your scatter diagram is number one going to tell you about the direction of the relationship and it is extremely clear that the direction is positive what is the second step you need to determine the strength of the correlation and i'm pretty sure there would be mixed responses here a few of you all are saying yes a few of you all are saying it is moderate a few of you all are saying it could also be weak it can also be weak right fine so this is what i told right this is where your subjective belief will come into picture based on the image a few of you all might feel it is moderate a few of you all might feel it is weak that is absolutely fine but how do you objectively evaluate this using correlation coefficient one we'll get to that in a moment and the third thing which your scatter diagram will explain is whether the relationship is linear or not you see that more or less all the data points fall along the straight line there so it's linear and the subjective belief here is cracked using correlation coefficient value which is given using small r let us calculate the small r also and try to understand whether the correlation is moderate or weak and this will give you some objective evidence comment about the strength of the relationship fine so let me close this and let me write the function for correlation cor correlation correlation of x comma y so it's wc dot at dollar waste comma wc dot at dollar at so if you run this i get a value which is 0.81 now what do you comment here the thumb rule that we were discussing about is if modulus of r is going to be greater than 0.85 you say that the correlation is strong and here the value is 0.81 so it is closer but less than so what does that imply if it is 0 0.818 it implies that there is moderate correlation a few of the books give this thumb rule that if modulus of r is greater than 0.85 it is strong a few other books say that if modulus of r is greater than 0.8 it is strong and a few other books also say that if modulus of r is greater than 0.7 there's a strong correlation so it all depends on the context etc but you can you can follow any thumb rule it's not a very strict rule that is followed right okay now that you know for a fact that the correlation is more or less strong or moderate and you know for a fact that the correlation is linear you can proceed with simple linear regression all right before that we need to understand a few finer nuances here the correlation is moderate or strong here that implies that the input variable waste circumference which you have chosen for predicting adipose tissue is a very good measure so the input variable ways that you have used is a good measure or a good input to predict your output if instead of 0.818 if you would have got say 0.231 so on and so forth what does it imply this implies that way circumference is extremely irrelevant in predicting your adipose tissue hence you need to look into a different variable altogether a different input variable way circumference can no longer be used to predict your adipose tissue if the correlation value is 0.31 and what do you do if you get a curvilinear relationship instead of a linear relationship we need to transform the data 
these are a few things that you need to bear in mind now let us proceed further the function which is used to run, run the linear regression is as follows but i'm going to st store the output in this model one and you need to come up with assignment operator which is less than and minus sign this assignment operator the shortcut for this is alt minus if you use alt minus you'll anyways get that assignment operator rather than each time giving a less than and a minus sign all right now if you want to build a linear model you write this lm linear model it is always y till the x so wc dot at dollar at tilde wc dot at dollar waist circumference so this function is as follows lm of y tilde x y is your output tilde x that means y you're trying to regress it regress it on this input so let me run this now the output is stored the linear regression model is stored in model if you do summary of model model one you get to see the entire output of your linear regression so we have run this model stored the output in model one we have done a summary of that you get to see the output here residual values are called as errors first thing that you need to remember residuals is equal to error the second thing is you need to write down that equation y is equal to beta naught plus beta 1 x and what are these beta naught and beta 1 values called as this beta naught is called as intercept and these two beta naught beta 1 are called as coefficient values or parameters or estimates so where do you see that coefficients i see it here it is also called as coefficient values or estimates or parameters right so let me write it down coefficient values are also called as okay so where do you see the word coefficients in the model output you see here the place where i've underlined coefficients right and you also see estimates and you also see an intercept so what is your intercept beta naught minus 215.9815 and what is the output that you're trying to predict adipose tissue so adipose tissue is equal to your beta naught value is minus 215.9815 so it is minus 215.9815 eight one five plus the value for beta one is related to your waist circumference x is waist circumference so the value corresponding to that is three point four five eight nine that is your beta one value so it is three point four five eight nine you multiply it with the input and the input variable here is waist circumference job done you have built a prediction model now okay, all right but even before we proceed further we need to ask a few questions is this beta naught and beta one value right or rather can i use this beta naught and beta one value in the prediction equation yes or no in order to determine that you need to look at the p value we have done all that we, we have discussed about standard error which is sigma over square root n right we know how to calculate the t value we have looked at the formula for t value using t value we have calculated the probability value you can look at the t table right to get the corresponding probability value right so that is how we have come up with this now here in order to decide on whether we can use beta naught and beta one values in the prediction equation or not we need to we need to look at the corresponding probability values this is a probability value 
how do you write this 2 multiplied by 10 raised to the power minus 16 and if you were to expand this it will be 0 0.1 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and then 2. And this value is much less than 0 0.05. Remember from the hypothesis testing, alpha value was always set at 0 0.05 industry standard. And alpha is your type 1 error. Yeah, 95% confidence. That is nothing but 0.05% alpha error. So when would you use these values in your prediction equation? You'll use them when the probability values are less than 5% chance that you will go wrong if you use these values in the prediction equation. So if there is less than 5% chance that you will go wrong, if you use this value in your prediction equation, then you proceed further. And for this also, you will have p value which is going to be less than 0 0.05 probability value. That means there is less than 5% chance that you will go wrong if you use this value in your prediction equation. Right? Hence, you need to look into the corresponding p values. And statistically, what it indicates is these beta naught and beta 1 values are significantly different than 0. If it's less than 0 0.05, statistically, what, what are the statements that you need to make? These two values are significantly different than 0. All right. Fine. So using this P logic, probability values logic, you know for a fact that you can use these two values in your prediction equation. So I'll write it down once again. Adipose tissue is equal to minus 215.9815 plus 3.4589 multi multiplied with your waist circumference. Fine, I've written that equation. Now I also need to gauge the strength of the overall model. How do I do that? In order to gauge the strength of the overall model, you need to look at multiple R squared value or R squared value. And the R squared value is told as, uh, or the thumb rule was, if the R squared value, which is coefficient of determination, if this is greater than 0.8, you have built a very good model. But here it is 0.67. Once again, these are only thumb rules. Take it with a pinch of salt. Okay, here it's 0.67, right? And it should be greater than 0 0.8. But this is, this is just a thumb rule. In real world, if you're working on biological sciences, in biological sciences, experiments are conducted in a very controlled environment. In such a scenario, even if you get an R squared value, which is greater than 0.95, you might not be happy. But in social sciences, in your real life business scenarios, an R squared value of even 0.5 might make sense. So based on the business scenarios, you need to consume these values with a pinch of salt. What is the difference between R squared and adjusted R squared? We are going to discuss in multiple linear regression. And you know F-statistic, we have discussed F-statistic using ANOVA. And the probability value corresponding to F-statistic is so much. This p-value is for the overall model. And the p-values for each and every coefficient, which come from the t-value, is for each individual entry. Your F-statistic p-value is for the overall model. Overall model also has less than 0 0.05, which indicates that there is less than 5% chance that you will go wrong if you use this prediction model. But one more thing that you need to notice here is that you have built a prediction model, all the values are fine. If a new patient walks into the hospital 
you'll take a measuring tape you'll measure the new person's waist circumference and substitute in this equation and then you'll get adipose tissue value and you'll tell to the customer that hey don't take the route of ct scan because i've used my prediction model to predict your adipose tissue value all right but you would get only a single value and what is the probability associated with a single value it is always equal to zero hence we need to come up with confidence interval which will come which will anyways do now but here if the p values are greater than 0 0.05 that means there is greater than 5% chance that you'll go wrong or statistically speaking these values are zero these values are close to zero but if this value is greater than 0 0.05 what we tend to do is we tend to transform the variables here we have Try to build a prediction model using waist circum adipose tissue and waist circumference. Probably you'll say, let me try to build this model using adipose tissue and log of waist circumference. Or you might also want to take a log on adipose tissue side and say, hey, let me predict this in this way. Or you might want to take log transformation on both sides. So ultimately you'll employ transformation or or Maybe you'll try to increase the sample size. So the first thing is try transformation on the existing data. If that doesn't work, try to increase the sample size. Or if that doesn't also if that also doesn't work, then you can actually consider that way circumference is not a good input to predict your output. So you might want to look into a, some other input altogether to predict your output. So choose different input, not different inputs rather, to predict your adipose tissue. These are the various possibilities. Now let us come up with the confidence interval. And I've already given the R code here. So this RAG is a regression model. So this is a function to actually come up with the confidence interval with 95 percent so let me run that you got two values one is for your lower range another is for your upper range this is your lower range and this is your upper range and how do you come up with this adipose tissue is equal to minus 259.19 plus 2.99 multiplied by waist circumference same interpretation intercept is beta naught this is beta one for your lower range and here you have the upper range adipose tissue is equal to minus 172.77 plus 3.92 multiplied by your waist circumference okay so hence we are coming up with a range so now you have three equations one equation is formed using this let me write it down one equation is formed using this another equation is formed using this and the third equation is formed using this this lower range upper range this is the true value or that's a point estimate rather now we can use a function called predict and you can say let me predict this model one and or let me copy that here you need to provide model one and you're trying to come up with prediction interval you can also come up with confidence interval here. Let me run this. There we go. So you're having three values here. Please focus here. So what we have done is we have this equation from this part, which is y or rather adipose tissue. Let me erase this. For these values, 
you can write the equation called adipose tissue is equal to minus 215.98 plus 3.45 divided by your waist circumference. You choose the waist circumference here for this first entry, 74.75. Substitute in this equation and you get a corresponding adipose tissue value, which is called as predicted value. And that predicted value or fitted value is 42.56. It's a fitted value. So here, the fitted value is 42.656. And what is actual value? 25.72. So the difference between the predicted value and the actual value is called as error. And remember, your prediction model will never be 100% accurate. So the difference between these two is called as error. On similar lines, you pick the second value. You substitute 72.6 in this equation. And if you substitute in this equation, you get 35.13. This is the predicted value. But here is your actual value. And the difference between these two is error. In that way, you'll have error for each and every one. And how are you getting the lower range and upper range? It's based on the prediction interval. Right, you have these two. These are confidence interval uh, values. If you can replace this with confident, C-O-F-N-F-I-N-T, you'll probably get confidence interval values for the sense.